Hey everyone, we got some great questions since the last call. This is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay. I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. So I took a small break today, got to spend some time by the pool. It was really, really nice. So one of the things we were talking about earlier on this, this uh, Facebook Live was what we were all going to be eating on the 4th of July. So I went out and had some yummy food. So I encourage you to go ahead and post below what you ate today, what you did enjoy. So particularly, who watching had corn on the cob for 4th of July? So go ahead and post that. And definitely post the city and state that you're located as far as listening to this, uh, you know, this Facebook Live. And we'd love to find out where you're at. Wherever you're at, all over the place, we want to find out where you're at. So yay to that. So again, happy 4th. I'm just going to take a minute to share this podcast. And then the things we're going to talk about, two things. We had a question today on uh, COPD, also known as coronary obstructive pulmonary disease. And we're also going to discuss some detoxification uh, options. So there are some people out there. I got some requests for detoxification. So really uh, excited about that. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to share this. And just give me one minute to share while we're waiting for some more people to join the room. So we do have Rebecca Kozak on the call. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? I am having a wonderful day, partially off. Really? You mean you have a day off? Okay. You have a you have a day off on a national holiday? Well, you know, on the farm, every once in a while, we have to take a day off. Mmm, on the farm, yes. That that's a good idea. But even on a national holiday, I really dig that you guys get a day off. So that that's good. So yay, so really happy you're here. And so did you by chance have any corn on the cob today? I did not have corn on the cob. I had spinach instead. Spinach. That's great. Yeah. Good call. Spinach is really good. Spinach is excellent. I yes. Spinach. Uh, did you grow your own spinach? Yes, ma'am. That's great. All right, so let's just go ahead and start. I had a client and a curious person seeking about their own biochemistry, and she's seeking to master her own biochemistry, and she wanted to learn about the disease coronary obstructive pulmonary disease, and that's known as COPD. And I just want to take a few minutes here and discuss for those of you out there that may not know exactly what it is and what I know about it and what I would like to share about it. So when we think about COPD as a medical practitioner, this is where my mind goes. And the things I think about are the, uh, the lung itself now cannot expand at the same level it used to. It is now congested. The little sacs that are in there, there's just so many sacs in your lungs and they can't open anymore. So you're actually, your ability to breathe has been dramatically reduced. That's what coronary obstructive pulmonary disease is. That can be caused, it can be exasperated by a lot of different conditions. I would say definitely bronchitis is one of the more well-known reasons why you might develop COPD. It is something that can continue to stick with you, the inflammation and the phlegm. You also, um, you know, emphysema is another form of it, if you will. Emphysema is finally at the point where you have you know, had a condition, an inflammatory condition so long that you've actually deteriorated and destroyed a lot of the little bubbler sacs that are in your lungs and your emphysema has now opened it into large cavernous pockets and it's even, you're even getting less lung absorption. So emphysema is even something ideally you don't want to go that far into. But if that's the case for you, there are things you can do to assist you with that. And one of the big things we want to look at is what are we eating? Are we eating things that are contributing 
to the inflammatory cascade or are we eating things that are assisting us in reducing inflammation? So we wanna look at things that are commonly referred to as allergen-free diets. Those are the things you wanna look at. There are a lot of allergens out there now, yet number one is gluten, and gluten can be found in wheat, barley, rye, spelt, and you wanna avoid those grains. And one of the things I'll tell people a lot, I'm, I'm amazed at how just that alone will be a game changer for them. Yet, there could be a lot of other things that you're allergic to that you don't know about. So keeping a food diary, starting to pay really close attention to what you're eating. So if you eat something and within a few minutes you're getting a headache, or you're getting a, maybe some sort of bloating, or later, maybe later in the night you realize, oh wow, I ate, I have some bloating, um, flatulence, gas, constipation, diarrhea. These are all warning flags of your system saying, pay attention to me, I didn't like what you did, please modify what's going on. So when you're looking at, again, inflammatory conditions such as COPD, which is what we're talking about today, you definitely want to take a look at what you're eating and how you feel after you eat. Things, another hint is brain fog. If you eat something and you feel woozy or uh, not as clear, you can't think as clear, that's another hint that that might be something you might want to get out of your diet. So usually, if, I, if it's off the, on the fly and I just want to help somebody quickly, I'll say please go gluten-free and then I might also encourage them to give up lactose, which is a, uh, a protein found in milk products that also can cause a lot of aller allergic reactions. So that's, those are the two things that you would want to look at right off the bat. And what's, the reason is, is that's going to reduce the immune response and the damage that's in the lungs, all that muco mucus that is being produced to protect and rebuild your lungs are now going to have the, the time to do their job and also kind of get cleared out. Your body's going to have the enzymes, the increased capacity to stop having to deal with the food allergens you're eating and your body's now going to be able to direct its attention to healing you, to repairing and healing what's going on inside of your body. So again, the lady that had the questions, we had, a, like I said, a, a somebody reach out to us about COPD. Any additional questions, you definitely can PM me directly, nutritional pharmacist or Melissa Galladay, and I'd be happy to continue you know, pursuing this for you because I know a, your quality of life can be restored and that's what I want you to focus on. My mission here is to help you, to teach you the tools so you can master your own biochemistry and with this knowledge you will go out from here armed with more information and you'll be able to make better choices out there in the real world. And the real world does not have your best interests at heart. The fast food industry, the big pharma industry, the, uh, you know, the large, large corporations that are out there, they don't have the farming industry. They do not have a vested interest in you at all. They have a vested interest in the bottom line and their goal is to make a profit. And regrettably, they're not very focused on the, your health and welfare as an individual person. So it's up to you to take the things that I share and the various other team members that I work with and industry leaders, it's up for you to reach out to these people, you know, connect with them, learn things, and go out there and, you know, continue being an uh, educated, knowledgeable master of your own biochemistry. So that's very exciting. So it is the 4th of July. I know a lot of you have been probably eating and drinking and making merry, and it's definitely a making merry day. And again, I'm very, very happy to be here on the 4th with all of you 2017. I know this is a, a year all of us will remember in some way, shape, or form. So for anyone that hits this video, and let's say it's July 5th, and you're feeling bloated, maybe you have a skin rash, you're like, whoa, what did I just do? There's really quick things you can do to help uh, write your bo body chemistry, and I just love to throw these out. One of my personal favorites, if I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling kind of sluggish and tired, I definitely like to experience have digestive enzymes first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. And the reason that is is they go into the bloodstream and they immediately start eating in any inflammation that I have in my blood. And they'll also land in my joints, they'll eat up inflammation in the joints, and they'll just kind of clear out. It's a way to keep that blood clean and uh, clean up the blood. So that's something that, so for tomorrow morning, July 5th, you're not feeling too hot, that's an option. Another great thing to do is just grab a nice big glass of water. That's the first thing you want to do in the morning. You want to have a nice big glass of water and also uh, maybe put a little lemon in it. That's really, really helpful to help clean the palate and start kind of like 
resetting the chemistry and also uh, you know that that whole experience your body when it gets that lemon juice in the morning with the water it just kind of resets everything it's a really great cleanser and I would recommend you do that tomorrow post celebration July 4th 2017 you'll find that very helpful the second topic we're going to discuss today is detoxification so I'm really excited to talk to you about that and there's just a few things I want to say about detoxification. First off, your body is doing it on a moment by moment basis. Your body is consistently doing that job. And when we talk about it as, you know, in this capacity, what we're really talking about is upping the opportunity for your body to do that. So what can we do to accelerate your body's um, ability to detoxify? There's a lot of things we can do. Number one, of course, is limiting the amount of foods that we're eating and making sure that the foods that we're eating are nutrient dense. So we want to try to eat maybe only eight hours the day because the rest of the time our body can rest and regenerate. So again, limiting the amount of foods you eat and, and they can be heavy calories. Don't worry about it. Heavy, dense, fat foods are fine if you're not ill. If you're ill, that's another topic, but I definitely want to, I can weave back into that. But the, the number one thing, when you're, when you, if you're thinking about, hey, I want to detoxify, I know something's going on, you want to think about starting to do that, saying, okay, I'm going to commit to eating these, these eight hours and then the rest of the time fasting. Or one of the quickest things you can do to detoxify is your own personal fast or cleanse. And there's a, when I say fast, I mean no solid foods at all. And you can either do a juice fast an organic juice fast where you would go to the store and you would buy your own organic juices such as, or excuse me, vegetables. You would buy celery, kale, cucumbers, apples. You would invest in these organic vegetables and fruits and then you would juice them and you would drink that juice. And if you did that for three days, you'd be amazed at how much energy you would have. You would, it would really feel a rebound in your energy. And you could also, um, you know, explore doing a water fast. That's something else that I, I've definitely recommended. It's not for everyone. It's uh, very stringent, but it's a very, very powerful way to detoxify your body. A cleanse is a little different. It depends on what you decide to go with. Uh, a cleanse that you could do would be something where maybe there's additional tablets you would take that would help rev up the system, the liver providing some of the precursors to help you detoxify. You'd probably be focusing on digestive enzymes that would help you detoxify the blood and the gut and help you eat up extra food particles you might have in your body. So that would be more of the cleanse. But if I was going to help somebody you know, detoxify, I would probably encourage them to do an organic juice fast, a three-day fast, and then be very selective on the foods that they reintroduce into their diet. And that, that's up to you, right? So you, as the person listening to this, you're the one that's going to have to decide what you want to reintroduce into your diet. Yet, I would definitely advise against processed foods. I would definitely advise you and encourage you to start experimenting with foods that you're not used to and you know, cultivating your palate in a new way. So you want to focus on whole foods, organic whole foods. And another big thing about when you're, you know, after you break a fast, you want to chew your food 30 times each bite. That's very important. Even now we need to be doing that, even pre-fast. But when you reintroduce food after that, after a cleanse or a fast, you want to chew your food really slowly because you're re revving up your system. You're saying, hey, it's time. We're going to start eating again. And so that's why 30 chews per bite is really going to assist the system and help you digest your food properly. I'm a big fan of dry brushing for detoxification and what that means is you would go to a health food store and one of my favorite health food stores that I promote all over the southwest is Natural Grocers and there are locations in Colorado and in Arizona and this is the, at that store you can buy what is referred to as a natural bristle brush and with a natural bristle brush you would be brushing your skin when it's dry and the reason we do that not when it's wet is because we're going to remove more of the skin layers and we're going to remove more of the toxins that are on the skin the skin is the biggest organ of the body and when we detoxify the skin we're really accelerating the detoxification that, that we're discussing today as a topic so a natural bristle brush a natural bristle brush and you would always brush towards your liver and just so you guys know 
Your liver is located right below your right lung and it sits over the stomach area and the intestines. It's right below the diaphragm of the right lung. So when you're brushing, you're always gonna brush towards that liver. So for example, if I was brushing, and it's also recommended that when you start to brush, you the first spot you brush is in your groin, your inner right groin. You wanna start in that inner right groin and brush up, like I said, into the, the stomach area, and that's going to open up the biggest portal, the portal lymph, the lymph portal area. Portal is the venous system that returns to be cleansed in your liver, and you're gonna brush up into that area, and that's gonna help open that up, and then you would start dry brushing. I would, I would definitely, you know, you can kind of pick whatever you want after that, but you would definitely wanna start in that, on the right side, opening up on the inner groin, the portal system. It's the biggest dump area of the whole system right there. That's gonna, again, you're gonna be alleviating the toxins through the skin, the dry skin layers, and that's gonna help with the detoxification that we're, that the question that we got earlier. So those of you that are listening, again, really just great to have you here, and I hope I addressed the questions we got earlier today. We did do a Facebook Live at 10 a.m. today, and we did get a question, two questions, one on COPD, what can be done, and also the second one on detoxification. When you learn your own biochemistry, you can repair and regenerate. I've seen this consistently. I've seen people reverse type 2 diabetes. I've seen arthritis you know, be alleviated, psoriasis, eczema. It's amazing what can happen when we're paying attention to what we're, you know, what we're taking. And you know, we do, in, you know, in this day and age, we definitely have to look at, are we getting all of our nutrients? You know, where are our nutrients? Are we getting them? So it's critical that you're getting the nutrients you need and it's critical that your, the food you're eating is as clean as possible. We say organic, yet all of us support non-sprayed. That's a term a lot of us have heard in the California area. And if you're working with a local gardener and you know that they're not spraying their foods, you know that's definitely something you wanna support. I encourage people to support local and definitely non-sprayed. But when you're out there in the regular you know, supermarket, you definitely want to invest in the organic. You're, you're limiting the pesticide exposure that you're gonna get and various things like that. Nevertheless, it's the 4th of July, so I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I know we're gonna be having fireworks later. At local time, it's uh, 6.20 here in Phoenix, Arizona, and probably in about an hour, uh, the city of Phoenix gets pretty lit up. It's, uh, let's see here you guys, it's um, 110 degrees outside in, um, at 6.20 at night. I personally love it, and so I'm digging it big time, and there's a lot of people chilling out by the pool, there's a lot of pool parties, etc., and fireworks. So wherever you are in the world, I hope you enjoy your evening, and it's always a pleasure to be here with you. So take care, and I'll see you Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. FYI, you can always dial in, and you can always call in directly. You don't even have to jump in through Facebook, or if you wanna give this number to your grandmother or your auntie who isn't on a social platform, or your uncle that's suffering, they can always give us a call directly at 408-638-0968, and there's an extension of 579-044-9276. I do post that on these Facebook Lives, and I want you to reach out. We, you know, we have the Zoom platform open right now. Rebecca, Rebecca Dukes is on there, and so that's another way you can communicate, but you can always reach out, private message us, or send me an email. There's a variety of ways you can connect with us. So on that note, I'm gonna sign off, and uh, again, happy 4th of July. Bye-bye.